Israel and Hamas go to war. Rockets, missiles, and the PR battle. Next on Global Pulse. A comparison of how broadcasters around the world are covering the war in Gaza. Warning, this segment contains graphic images. Israel says its goal is to break Hamas, bring it to its knees, and force it to beg for a ceasefire. From the gun battles to the victims, the world media didn't seem to miss an angle in the conflict between Israel and Hamas. Red alert, Hamas fires two rockets. Sterot, one mile from Gaza, is under a barrage of attacks. Burning tears pour down the students' cheeks in Gaza. The Jews struck our schools so that we cannot learn or study or grow up and learn to fight them. International journalists have not been allowed into Gaza by Israel. Israel said the restrictions were to protect journalists. But Russia today pointed out the hard lesson Jerusalem learned in its last war. In the second uh, Lebanese war, we had a problem with many journalists um, walking around the forces. While a journalist was describing, this infantry brigade behind me is now entering Lebanon from this position. And this we cannot, we cannot allow. The media restrictions may have had the opposite effect of what Israel intended, according to France's TV Sank. The result is that only images produced by Palestinian journalists are available to Western media. The Palestinians themselves have attempted to control all of their communications. Here, they portray their tragedy in all its horror. In this war of images, hundreds of dead Palestinians clearly weigh greater than a few rockets. Israel cannot allow images like these to be broadcast across the world for months on end, and therefore must act quickly, regardless of the cost. Israel launched an elaborate media offensive, as reported by the online Israel News Network, which is funded by the Jewish Settlers Movement. As the war of weapons against Hamas continues, so does the war of words, and as part of that effort, the IDF has again expanded its YouTube presence adding the army's Arabic language spokesman to talk directly to the Arab public in Arabic. The UAE's Al Arabiya acknowledged Israel's media offensive, but pointed out that Hamas was media savvy as well. This large pile of written statements and leaflets dropped by the Israeli forces in the Gaza Strip is part of Israel's psychological warfare intended to work in tandem with its military campaign on the ground. Meanwhile, Hamas is trying to counter its psychological war. Hamas launched a satellite channel and opened dozens of websites for that purpose. Some broadcast reports on the conflict contain self-serving elements, including Iran's press TV, and Saudi Arabian television. A Saudi hospital aircraft staffed with medical personnel carrying the third wave of injured Palestinians has arrived in Riyadh. Our brothers in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia have provided us with the necessary medical treatment. The Saudis are our saviors who were sent to us by God. Americans frustrated with the mainstream media have turned to press TV, due in most part to press TV's breaking news coverage and becoming one of the very few international stations to have reporters inside of Gaza. Press TV and Al Jazeera questioned whether Americans were getting the whole story. Images on U.S. networks show Israelis clearing up after another Hamas rocket attack and stone-throwing Palestinians confronting Israeli troops. And they have to fight for airtime against a well-coordinated Israeli media campaign. Take a look at the newspapers. Plenty of stories about Gaza, but in just about every one, the Israeli position is given priority. And the pictures generally show Israeli airstrikes or strikes on Gaza, but not always the impact of those strikes on the people. News reporting is attempting to be balanced rather than striving for actual accuracy. So it's somehow equating a handful of tragic Israeli deaths in southern Israel with hundreds upon hundreds of uh, deaths of uh, people in Gaza. If you go by this NBC report, the analyst on Press TV was right. It's been two weeks now since Israel launched its offensive, and the combined death toll in this war is now almost 800 people. What NBC failed to say was that, according to Reuters News, more than 780 of those deaths were Palestinian, while 13 were Israeli. For Global Pulse, I'm Evelyn Messenger.
This program is brought to you by Link TV for educational and non-commercial use only. Link TV is the only US network dedicated to global and national news, uncompromising documentaries and diverse cultural programs. Programs which connect you to the world.